Today I am going to break down a salmon very, very poorly because it is not something that I have a lot of experience doing. And also it was probably like 89 degrees at the studio and at that temperatures, the salmon fat tends to melt. So that salmon in my hand is literally practically melting. So when it comes to like learning how to break down a fish, I'm like the last person that you should be like paying attention to. But one thing I am really good at is making a fish bone soup. So we're just gonna speed right on through the part of me breaking this down and then just fast forward right to the part where I start making the fish bone soup and That'll be the that'll be the part that's worth your time. <laughs> I gotta say, this is probably one of my biggest regrets as being a person who was self-taught, simply because like I never got this kind of exposure. I always ended up getting my fish in large fillets directly from the fishmonger, so it was never really anything that I had to do. But you know what? You can't be all things to everyone, so I knew what to do with the fish after it was butchered. When I say fish bone soup, I pretty much meant all the scrap parts of the fish that you weren't going to eat as meat. In this case, it was going to be the salmon head, the collar, the spine, any scrap bones that were big enough to use, as well as some scraps of meat. What frying does to the fish is that first, it, it obviously it cooks the fish. Um, it also softens the bones and it cooks the meat through so that it does not impart a very fishy taste to the broth. If you used raw fish, it would be a fishier broth, but in this case, the broth comes off milky and sweet because you fried it first. And even though I am essentially just using like the scrap parts of a fish that I broke down, in traditional Cantonese cuisine, this was actually based off of a whole fish soup, um, milky white fish soup, is done you could do it with like a tilapia or something what you would do is you would take the fish whole have it like gutted and have the gills removed of course but then you'd fry the entire fish and you would do the exact same thing that i would be doing now fry the whole fish through so that it's cooked all the way through and then boil it it's nice pieces of fish that i just put in the pot and boiled with i'm going to give to my goodest girl look at her she's so happy <laughs> She, she knows exactly, like she's so happy. Never give raw salmon to your dog because they can get something called like salmon disease and it can be deadly to dog. I did a video where I did give raw salmon scraps to my dogs and somebody in the comments so graciously informed me that that was a big no-no and I looked it up and I was like, okay. Obviously my dogs were fine from that incident but it could have hurt them and I'm really glad that I learned about this. So as you can see, just straining off all of the meat and the little bits out of the broth, you have something that is pretty milky. The texture of the stock is light but substantial, sticky from the amount of collagen in the same way like a nice bone broth is. And it's commonly flavored with some tomato and salt. Um, some people have cooked pumpkin in this, I believe. But me, I personally love the umami flavors of some shallots and the tomatoes. Also, I had scrapped tomatoes, so why not just use them all? In Chinese medicinal cooking, a fried fish head soup will be cooked with green papaya and served to pregnant women. And it is said to increase in later on breast milk production. Obviously, I don't know whether or not that's true, but it is delicious. So like, if I were a pregnant woman, I would say whatever the hell I needed to say to eat as much fish head and papaya soup as possible. That was just the teensiest touch of MSG that I put into the broth because it just the tiniest bit always just gives all broths a little kick. And that is as much MSG as you should be using, by the way. Um, in in your food like the tiniest little bit will go a long way Otherwise everything will just taste like it came straight out of a ramen packet a little bit of ginger now and some black pepper as well as a couple of Scrunches of white pepper. I don't know what it's called grinding a couple of ground grinds of white pepper yes. and Yeah, that is it. That is a gorgeous white milky soup. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to help myself to some, obviously, but I'm going to strain it out and then I'm going to leave it in the fridge overnight so you can see how like much collagen just comes from this the bones of this one fish. I said milky white, but because I cooked so many tomatoes in there, it actually uh, turned out to be a little red. But this is actually one of my favorite soups to make because A, fish bones, 
are really cheap in the United States because nobody knows what to do with them. And B, you get all the substance and, of and, and satisfaction and health benefits of a bone broth. But instead of cooking things for like 24 hours, this stuff is ready in like one hour, not even like 45 minutes of boiling it. It's thick, it's creamy, it's almost got the texture of like a really light, like a root based soup, almost like a vichyssoise or something like that. But this is just like salmon fat and meat protein that's been broken down into the broth. It's so, it's, it's just luxurious in texture. Oh, mm. the ginger did not add any sourness to it at all. No more than the tomato did, but, but the tomato in there was just like this little bright kind of acidic finish. Probably both of those things is what makes it not register as fishy at all. There's no fishy flavor to this. Only the slightest hint of salmon because frying it just takes all the fishiness away. Mm. Oh man. I can feel my dog behind me just staring me down and I feel bad because she can't have this. So this is me the next day and you can see like, it's just all of the collagen in the chilled fish soup has just turned it into kind of like a loose jelly. Not very appetizing looking, but you know what? It's just good for you. It's good for you. Want to see my dog get excited over fish again? Yeah, you do. Uh, lie down, lie down, lie down.